SoftBank's board has approved their remaining investment in OpenAI, setting up that company to get another $22.5 billion. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headline Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Earlier this year, SoftBank committed to make a $30 billion investment in OpenAI split across two stages. The second stage, which is now approved, was contingent on OpenAI completing their for-profit restructuring. According to sources speaking with the information, that proviso is still in place, but the board is otherwise ready to go ahead. Now, it's unclear whether we should draw any conclusions about the likelihood that OpenAI's for-profit conversion gets approved by the California Attorney General. Former OpenAI safety researcher Miles Brundage suggested that SoftBank might be getting a little ahead of themselves. He argued that public information about the restructuring has been, in his words, all bad so far. On the other hand, Microsoft has reached an in-principle agreement on the conversion, so there are no remaining roadblocks from investors. Meanwhile, for those observing SoftBank's moves in capital markets, it's far from clear how the funding for the deal is going to come together. Earlier this month, it was reported that SoftBank were trying to borrow $5 billion from global banks, pledging their arm stock as collateral. More recently, they were said to be tapping global bond markets for $2.9 billion, funded in both euros and U.S. dollars. This weekend, the Japan Times reported that SoftBank had issued $2 billion in hybrid dollar bonds across an ultra-long 40-year term. The instruments would be subordinate to senior debt and allow SoftBank to defer interest payments. Initial pricing has the bonds priced at around an 8.5% interest rate, well above the 6.8% for SoftBank's existing long-duration bonds. The Japan Times writes, The fact that SoftBank CEO Masayoshi Son is resorting to issuing expensive dollar and euro-denominated hybrids smacks of desperation. Indeed, SoftBank has been very busy looking for money lately. They noted the margin loan, sale of T-Mobile shares, and record-breaking issuance of yen-denominated debt, adding, What has largely been missing amid all this action, however, is good old-fashioned bank loans. As an investment holding company, SoftBank doesn't have reliable operating cash flows to boast about when asking for mega-financing deals. As a result, Sun has come to public markets. Ratings agency S&P Global, meanwhile, has said that they would consider downgrading SoftBank's bonds if their loan-to-value ratio gets above 25%. Whether you're bullish or bearish, this is certainly another sign that we are in uncharted territory when it comes to the AI build-out. Next up, Mistral has launched a new enterprise control center called AI Studio. The new platform will provide agent building, orchestration, observability, and governance tools designed to help enterprises deploy AI at scale. In an announcement blog post, they wrote, Mistral AI Studio brings the same infrastructure, observability, and operational discipline that powers Mistral's own large-scale systems, now packaged for enterprise teams that need to build, evaluate, and run AI in production. The new platform highlights just how extensive Mistral's model range has become. The company now offers 19 different models, including both proprietary and open-sourced, as well as multimodal, coding-specific, and speech-enabled options. The platform represents an evolution in the sophistication of AI tools for business. One interesting feature offered by Mistral is called AI Registry, which serves as a system of record for all AI assets across the company. In other words, enterprises can track every agent, dataset, tool, and workflow, registering their ownership and versioning throughout the production lifecycle. The system can manage access controls, moderation policies, and a promotion pathway to full deployment. It also integrates directly into observability and orchestration tools. Mistral writes, This unified view enables true governance and reuse. Every asset is discoverable, auditable, and portable across environments. Mistral is basically articulating a view that raw model performance is increasingly going to give way to governance as the most important aspect of enterprise deployments. They wrote, Enterprises are entering a new phase of AI adoption. The challenge is no longer access to capable enough models. It's the ability to operate them reliably, safely, and at scale. That shift demands production infrastructure built for observability, durability, and governance from day one. Certainly, this harkens to all the things that we've been sharing about what we've been seeing at Super Intelligent with these recent episodes. And as this Mistral AI Studio rolls out further, we'll see how it is received by the market. Next up, an interesting partnership. Stability AI has signed a partnership with EA to provide AI tools for the game-making process. EA said that the two companies will, quote, co-develop transformative AI models, tools, and workflows that empower our artists, designers, and developers to reimagine how content is built. Now, at this point, using visual AI tools for everything from initial design to final asset generation is increasingly commonplace in the games industry, so the partnership doesn't come as much of a shock. In one example, also from last week, PUBG developer Krafton said they were becoming an AI-first studio and building their own GPU cluster to support the effort. The interesting part is that EA is rapidly executing on the AI strategy that underpinned the decision to take the company private. The Financial Times reported last month that the investor group were, quote, betting that AI-based cost cuts will significantly boost EA's profits in the coming years. EA could have retooled using AI while remaining a public company, 
but going private affords them the ability to move quickly while, frankly, ignoring what might be an inevitable backlash. Business Insider reported last week that EA was facing morale issues due to a broad AI mandate premised on using faulty tools. Gaming Reddit is, of course, no fan of AI cost-cutting by a developer already criticized for the quality of their releases. A complete AI overhaul, then, is much safer without the risk of the stock plummeting on negative headlines as EA figures out how to get this right. It's also intriguing to see Stability AI granted a second life as a bespoke AI partner. In 2023, Stability was one of the hottest AI startups with the success of their stable diffusion image model. Since then, there's been acquisition talk, the resignation of their CEO, and a debt restructuring to keep the company afloat. Given how much enterprise demand there is for serious talent to rebuild from inside, this might be an interesting pathway as we get to something more of a consolidation period in the AI industry. Lastly, an interesting one that comes from a talk in San Francisco, Thinking Machines Lab believes that learning, rather than scaling, will be the next big unlock for AI models. Late last year, an entire narrative cycle played out around model scaling hitting a wall. The major labs were seeing disappointing results from scaling up training data sets and using more compute for training runs, leading to widespread concern that model performance had plateaued. OpenAI then released O1 and demonstrated that reasoning and test time compute were another avenue for model improvement. With improvements to reasoning now slowing down, there has been a large focus on context engineering tools like advanced memory. Many believe that continuous learning will need to be developed to unlock the next big jump in model performance. Speaking at the TED AI conference in San Francisco, Rafael Rifolov, a reinforcement learning researcher at Thinking Machines Lab, said, I believe that the first superintelligence will be a superhuman learner. It will be able to very efficiently figure out and adapt, propose its own theories, propose experiments, use the environment to verify that, get information, and iterate that process. He doesn't expect that adding training data will be a viable path to superintelligence, commenting, learning is something an intelligent being does. Training is something that's being done to it. Regarding reinforcement learning, though, he still thinks there's a lot of space to explore, arguing, I don't believe we're hitting any sort of saturation points. I think we're just at the beginning of the next paradigm, the scale of reinforcement learning in which we move from teaching our models how to think, how to explore thinking space, into endowing them with the capability of general agents. Ultimately, Raphael is looking to apply the same techniques that allowed models to learn to code and to search the internet to learning itself. He commented, learning in and of itself is an algorithm. It has inputs, the current state of the model. It has data and compute. You process it through some sort of structure, choose your favorite optimization algorithm, and you produce, hopefully, a stronger model. I believe that under enough computational resources and with broad enough coverage, general purpose learning algorithms can emerge from large-scale training. The way we train our models to reason in general over just math and code, and potentially act in general domains, we might be able to teach them how to learn efficiently across many different applications. Interesting stuff to kick off this Monday, but that's going to do it for the headlines. Next up, the main episode. 